Well, uh, you know, let's start actually by talking a little bit about Biocon. Biocon is considered to be a company which is at the helm of innovation, but there is a little bit of a lack of understanding on what exactly Biocon does. What is its key focus? So just give us a brief and let's start the conversation with that. Um, let me start by saying that Biocon is a very differentiated company in the pharma sector because we have opted to develop biopharmaceuticals which are actually biologic drugs as opposed to chemically synthesized drugs which is what most of the Indian pharmaceutical companies do. Uh, the big difference between synthetically uh, or chemically synthesized drugs and uh, biologically developed drugs is the fact that the, uh, the complexity of these drugs is of orders of magnitude greater than uh, uh, chemically synthesized drugs which are often referred to as small molecules and biologic drugs are referred to as large molecules uh, which are really distinguished by the size of these molecules because of the very nature of the fact that uh, chemically synthesized molecules uh, are less complex to develop, they are fairly homogeneous, whereas the large molecules or biologics have very, very differentiated attributes to their biological uh, characteristic. And therefore, the molecule itself has many elements to it, many characterized uh, aspects to it. Sure. And that's what makes it so complex. Everybody can understand what exactly a generic drug is. But with regards to a biosimilar, why is it becoming so important? We've heard of U.S. companies getting, I mean, U.S. Uh, getting approvals for biosimilar, European countries also accepting biosimilars. Where exactly does India also stand within those geographies? So the reason why biosimilars are getting to be increasingly more important is because of the fact that these are very, very expensive drugs to produce and even more expensive to afford in terms of treatment. So uh, I think it's extremely important to get biosimilars in order to basically create uh, a cost competitive environment that can drive down prices of these very, very expensive and often life saving drugs, which is what biosimilars can do. Um, I do believe that India has a huge opportunity in biosimilars uh, because of the fact that it has done very well in the generic molecule space, where, as you know, India actually has a commandeering position uh, in terms of volume. We, as a country, uh, cater to almost 30% of the global generics market. And in terms of API, we probably cater to about 40% of the global generics market. Mm. I believe that there is an opportunity to replicate this success in developing biosimilars, which otherwise can be called biogenerics. Mm. Okay. Except that there needs to be a lot of investment to get there. Now, Biocon has been one of those few companies who have made those investments over a decade or more to develop biosimilars. And we've actually realized great success in getting some of these important biosimilars approved in both Europe and USA. And given the complexity of these kind of drugs and the huge investment needs in developing these biosimilars, there are very few players at this point in time. Okay. That point is taken, ma'am. But ma as the regulatory understanding gets better, I think you will see more Indian companies uh, taking a calculated risk on such an opportunity. What about price pressure and biosimilars? We've seen the US generic market. We've seen price pressure and competition come into complex generics as well. Will biosimilars see the same kind of, say, price pressure? And if so, by when? 
As you know, pricing pressure is really determined by how many players there are in the market, the size of the market, and uh, you know the ability to compete based on cost competitiveness. And I believe that right now, in the early days of biosimilars, the uh, the, the pricing pressure is not going to be as intense as it will probably be in the next uh, five or ten years. Mm -hmm. As you get more companies getting into the, uh, this particular uh, segment, you are likely to see bet increasing pricing pressure. But at least for the next five or maybe ten years, the pricing pressure will not be as intense as in uh, small molecule generics. Okay. The key argument, uh, Ms. Shaw, for Indian companies, and a lot of fund managers talk about this as well, that you need to back the horse which has the highest amount of uh, focus, say, on R&D and innovation. But Indian companies are moving steadily, however slower as compared to their global counterparts. Do you think that there is a need to innovate faster in India? I have always believed that we should be investing m much more in R&D and innovation. Uh, I think Biocon has shown the way because we uh, consistently invest at least 15 to 18 percent of our revenues on uh, developing uh, biopharmaceuticals and a large part of it of course is uh, the biosimilars. Uh, these take deep pockets and moreover there has a, it has a much longer gestational timeline than, say, generic molecules. And therefore, I think, uh, you know, companies need to understand what they are playing in, but I think they must take these first steps to make these large investments. Biocon, as you know, took this big bet 10 years ago, and we are now reaping the benefits of that. But it has taken us, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, a long time, deep investments and creating a very, very large infrastructure and scientific ecosystem and an innovation ecosystem to get there. So I think any Indian company that wants to bet on these uh, biosimilars will have to start making those investments and be patient because it is going to take most Indian companies anywhere between three to five years before they really can uh, take a, a biosimilar to the uh, regulated markets of US and Europe. Hmm. What about India as a growth market in any case? A lot of companies are focusing inward and you can see it in the growth statistics as well. For example, one of your oncology drugs was uh, did very well in the Indian market recently. Uh, so given that perspective, do you think that India is going to become much more of an important growth market in the medium term, especially in terms of issue when we are facing issues such as price pressure in other markets such as the US and Europe? Um, let me answer this question in one way. Uh, one is that uh, India is a very low-cost market, I must tell you that to begin with. Uh, if you look at the price of uh, products including biosimilars in India, it is perhaps the lowest in the world. So I don't think from a, a, a pricing point of view or a cost perspective it's going to be a great uh, way to ward off the pricing pressure in other parts of the world. But I think where India has an opportunity is because of the large market and the need to provide affordable access to some of these new drugs, especially biologics and biosimilars, uh, it is likely to be a large market opportunity and a growing market opportunity. Uh, but from a pricing point of view, I want to caution uh, the viewers that it is not exactly the most attractive marketplace. Hmm. Ms. Shaw, just a little, uh, your view actually about the Indian market as a health industry. We are currently, I think, one of the second most uh, vulnerable countries when it comes to diseases such as diabetes at this point in time. We have pollution levels which are at extremely high levels in certain cities. Given that, do you think that India is probably at the cusp of a health crisis and there needs to be much more invest investment in terms of prevention of these kind of non-communicable diseases? 
Well, I personally believe India needs to invest much more in its healthcare system. I completely agree with you that we are on the cusp of a health crisis because I think non-communicable diseases are increasing at an alarming pace. And I think even though the government is trying to do whatever it can in terms of, uh, uh, you know, coming out with the um, Ayushman uh, Bharat uh, program and other, uh, you know, uh, healthcare initiatives, I think it's not enough because I think people are finding it very difficult to afford health care uh, even at middle income uh, levels. So I think we need to do a lot more. We need to basically create a universal health care uh, model and I think we can do that because India is the lowest cost uh, you know, base in terms of both health care services and uh, uh, you know, medicines and diagnostics. Of course, I think uh, we, it starts with prevention and preventive health care. But I think where we are really weak is in treatment uh, and outcomes because we just don't have uh, the required human resource to cope with the disease burden. So I really think that these are areas where we really need to focus a lot more and build scale in some of these areas. So I think whilst we have one of the largest pharmaceutical uh, sectors in the world, I mean, we are rightly called the pharmacy of the world, I would say most of these pharmaceutical products are being exported out of the country. I think the market opportunity in India is much greater than what it is today. And I do believe that the government has a much bigger role to play in delivery of healthcare than it does today. And I really believe that the reason why it is not at an optimal level is because the government just hasn't found the ideal and optimal model to partner with the private sector, whether it is in healthcare delivery or the pharmaceutical industry. I think it needs to really focus on developing this optimal model of PPP. Okay, well, let's send this conversation with uh, Ms. Shaw, your bird's eye view in terms of where you see the pharmaceutical industry. We're spearing ahead in terms of global innovation when it comes to pharmaceuticals, say if it's gene editing or it's immuno-oncology, uh, all of these different drugs which are helping us survive and cope better. 10 years or maybe 15 years down the line, if you can provide a bird's eye view on where pharma and health would be globally, would, be, would we be healthier and uh, more disease free? At a global level, the answer is an emphatic yes, because these new technologies are completely revolutionizing the way we are looking at treating disease. If you look at cancer, I think you're seeing huge, huge transformational steps being taken in the way we look at cancer and treat cancer and diagnose cancer. And I think immuno-oncology is playing a big role in driving uh, cancer from cancer care to cancer cure. And I believe this is an area that India must focus on. You know, the CAR T cell technologies, the gene editing technologies, of both for cancer and genetically, uh, you know, of, uh, uh, genetically linked diseases, huge opportunity for India. But I don't think we're doing enough to bring focus on these areas and bring the sort of investments into these areas that can build both scale and critical mass. It's a big opportunity for India. When you look at non other non-communicable diseases, certainly I think uh, India uh, can play a big role whether it is cardiac care, diabetes, uh, respiratory or otherwise, I think there are very, very big opportunities. Even in uh, drug resistant antibiotics, India is doing a lot in terms of innovation. Many, there are many, many companies developing new antibiotics. There are many companies developing new cancer drugs. A lot of innovation is going on. But I think we have to make sure that we enable these startups to actually scale up. That's really where the money is required. That's where the regulatory understanding is also required. And we need to make sure that India is an ecosystem that welcomes innovative drugs, clinical research, and many other aspects of innovation that creates the ideal 
innovation ecosystem which at the moment is not quite there. Okay. All right. On that note, Ms. Shaw, thank you very much for joining in into the medicine box and sharing your views. We'll wrap it up on that note. Thank you very much. Thank you.